Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a special guest from out of the past. All the way back from the year 1506, here he is, the great Italian sailor and explorer, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Mr. Columbus, it's an honor to have you in our studio, and now that you've returned to us after having been a statue in Columbus Circle in New York for so many years, what's the first thing you'd like to do? I'd like to kill about a three million pigeons. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Columbus, we're all anxious to know, how did you happen to discover America? Boo, so big. How could I miss it? That's charming. <laughs> uh, tell me, wasn't it really because you thought the world was round? That's all right. I think if the world is round, everybody else say the world is a flat, but we all are wrong. Oh? The world is a crooked. <laughs> Mr. Columbus, history tells us that you're a very poor man. That's a true. We're a very poor family. Couldn't even afford a shoes. No shoes? What did you do? Paint our feet black and lace up our toes. <laughs> well, now, if you were so poor, how did you ever get the money for your famous voyage? I write a check. <laughs> but in those days, there were no such thing as writing checks. That's why every year on a Columbus Day, they close up at the banks. <laughs> uh, tell me... Isn't it true? Didn't you get some help from the king and queen of Spain? That's all right. I go to see King of Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. I say, eh, king and a queen, I need the money to buy boats so I can discover America. And they say to me, Chris, why you got to discover America? We got enough of countries already. So I say, look, if I don't discover America, what other country is going to borrow the money? <laughs> is it true that in order to buy your boats, uh, Queen Isabella pawned her jewels? That's the truth. Well, why did King Ferdinand then throw you in jail? I lose a pawn ticket. <laughs> and finally, on August 3rd, 1492, you set sail. Hey, you got a good memory. <laughs> That's the truth. I set the sail with my three good boats, the Patty, Maxine, and Laverne. <laughs> no, excuse me, wasn't it the Santa Maria, the Nina, and the Pinta? Uh, who's a Columbus? You or me? <laughs> did you have any trouble with your crew? Only during the trip. <laughs> we got to know food, we got to know water, we don't know where we're going, and I don't know why they get us upset. Well, what did you do to calm them down? Uh -huh. I give them my little slogan. Getting there is half the fun. <laughs> and then I sing them my little song. Your little song? <laughs> is it original? No, I made it up myself. We all are braver sailors. We sail through a storms and a fogs. But if it wasn't for drama, I mean, we'd all be as sick as a dog. <laughs> tit willow, tit willow, tit willow. Now, we all know that your trip was successful, Mr. Columbus. Tell us, what was the first thing you did when you landed on the shores of America? I call my home in Italy, long distance, so my wife know I arrive safely. <laughs> Wasn't that rather expensive? No, I do like all the traveling men. I call person to person and ask her for me. <laughs> well, now, one more question before you go, Mr. Columbus. My shoe. After all these years, what do you think of the country you discovered? Well, the country is a very nice, sir, but the people is crazy. Why do you say that? I'll give you a for instance. I get on a subway. I look up on a sign. The sign is say, spit on the floor, find a ten dollars. I spit on the floor, I know find a nothing. <laughs> Arrivederci. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you, Christopher Columbus. 